Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Egypt today for his sixth visit to the region since the Israel-Hamas war broke out in October. While in Cairo, Secretary Blinken met with several Middle East leaders, including officials from the Palestinian Authority, before he heads to Israel tomorrow. It comes as the U.S. is putting forward a draft U.N. resolution calling for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza that is tied to the release of all the remaining hostages still being held. It's the strongest language put forward by the Biden administration to date, which has used its veto authority at the U.N. to block other ceasefire efforts in support of Israel. During a joint press conference in Egypt, Secretary Blinken said the U.S. continues to work towards a ceasefire, including ongoing hostage talks in Qatar. But he also reiterated that an Israeli military offensive in Rafah would be a mistake. There's a clear consensus around a number of shared priorities. First, the need for an immediate sustained ceasefire with the release of hostages. President Biden has been very clear that a major ground operation in Rafah would be a mistake and something that we can't support. Um, there is no place for the many civilians who are massed in, in Gaza, uh, in Rafah, excuse me, uh, to go to get out of harm's way. Uh, and for those that would inevitably remain, it would, uh, it would be a humanitarian disaster. Joining me now is NBC News international correspondent Raf Sanchez in Tel Aviv. Raf, thank you so much for joining me. So give me the key takeaways here. We know the secretary had meetings with Arab leaders in Cairo. He's heading to Israel tomorrow. How much can he actually get done on this trip? What are the real tangibles here? So, Kristen, the secretary is making a couple of positive indications when it comes to those ceasefire talks underway right now in Qatar. He has said he believes that the gaps between Israel and Hamas are narrowing. But perhaps more importantly, we're learning tonight from the Israeli government that CIA director Bill Burns will be in Qatar tomorrow. Secretary Blinken will be here in Israel. The CIA director will be in Qatar. He'll be meeting his Israeli counterpart, the head of the Mossad, as well as the prime minister of Qatar and the head of Egyptian intelligence. I've got to say, Kristen, it seems unlikely that the CIA director would come all this way if it looked like these talks were going nowhere. So that is the good news, as it were. The secretary also trying to pave the way for something longer term beyond that ceasefire deal, which would be, as far as we understand it, a temporary ceasefire for six weeks. He is trying to get to a place where he can tell the Israelis, if you agree to end the war, if you agree to move towards a two-state solution, there will be a big prize on the other side, and that is the possibility of normalization with key Arab states like Saudi Arabia. And the hope is that that will convince the Israelis to move in the direction of two-state, something they've been unwilling to do so far. Krista. Yeah, Raf, based on my conversations, that is the real pressure point, that chance at a normalization deal with Saudi Arabia. You're absolutely right. I want to ask you about this draft that was submitted by the U.S. calling on the U.N. for an immediate uh, ceasefire in Gaza in exchange for the return of hostages. Do you think and do you expect this will receive support at the U.N.? And I should say calling on Israel. Do you think this will receive support at the U.N.? It's a really good question, Kristen. The politics of the U.N. Security Council can be a little unpredictable. The U.S. says they will bring it up for a vote on Friday. That seems to suggest that they feel confident that they have the votes. Looking back at the previous three ceasefire resolutions, the most recent one was supported by 13 out of 15 members of the Security Council. The U.S. vetoed it. The U.K. abstained. Everybody else voted in favor of an immediate ceasefire. Now, that was a ceasefire without preconditions, not linked to a hostage deal. That is unlike the American resolution, where a ceasefire is conditional on a hostage deal. And the question is whether other members of the Security Council can find a way to support that or if they will be concerned that the fighting will drag on and on and on as long as these ceasefire negotiations drag on. Kristen. Right. Raf, we always appreciate your fantastic reporting. I always say this, but I'll say it again. Please continue to stay safe. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.